Yes, you guys, welcome back. I'm the EFC. This is Blue Lions TV, and today I'm here to bring you guys the match review to our 4 0 win against FC Krasnodar. Now, before I continue on, very quick disclaimer out the way first. Now, apologies for not having any hysterical laughing at the start of this review, but please, for not even one second, don't want you guys to even think that I did not feel this game today. When Christian Pulisic made it 4 0, receiving a Tammy Ram assist, you guys, I felt that. When Timo Werner got on that score sheet, blasting the ball from the penalty spot, rightfully getting a goal he deserves after winning us how many goddamn penalties, you guys, I felt that. When I saw Hakim Ziyech absolutely run the game, run the game, getting on the score sheet too. Oh my god, you guys, oh, that's when things started to go really blurry and hazy for me. But what really just tipped me over the edge was the fact that after God knows how long, how long, how long have we suffered? <laughs> we finally use a 4-3-3 that has Kante playing DM, Mason Mount down the left and Kai Havertz down the right hand side. And is it any surprise that for the second time we've used a 4-3-3, we've scored three goals in the second half. This is our formation, you guys. We are a 4-3-3 team. This is what we're about. You saw the instant upgrade, the instant improvement, the instant improvement in our fluidity in the final third, the interchange. The passing options that just came out from absolutely nowhere. We looked so restrictive in the first half. Once that came in the second half, options for days we saw the excellent qualities of the later rivals inside the books and it was no surprise that playing this way playing offensively this was too much for Krasnodar to handle and it's so exciting to think that wow this potentially is going to be our go-to formation which I think it is going to be for this season and just seeing the rewards we're going to reap from this honestly is extremely exciting to see you guys but you know, this doesn't explain why there wasn't any hysterical laughing at the start. You guys, I described all sort the of emotional moments. I felt that and, you know, just the combination of all of it together was a bit too much for me in the end. Because with my first tape recording this year, you guys, I was going absolutely crazy in my laughing. Kind of demonic in that sense. It's like I was possessed. God knows what even happened. And, you know, I rightfully deserved the, uh, the crazy hiccups that came following that. I think I laughed too hard that hiccups were just like coming out of my mouth for days. It was ridiculous. I just want to say a massive shout out to all the timeline doctors <laughs> who came through, helped me out and gave me the remedies to get over these hiccups. Like, wow, how is this happening? I don't know. It sums up my life, you guys. But today, let's speak about the great things that happened. And, you know, let's speak about the terrible things in the first half too because you guys know i'm here to paint a very accurate picture of the game today so before i get into that you guys let me get the plug out of the way first as you can see today's video is brought to you by the one football app now if you guys do download the app right now you have the opportunity to vote for your man of the match you can see all the relevant match information and stats coming out from the game afterwards too and most importantly because the app is a hub a great hub that has all the information you want instantly whenever you want to hear what the manager has to say after a game or hear or read player interviews you can find all the relevant information on the one football app i'm gassing up for a reason you guys i work with this brand for a reason i'm telling you you know how many companies are trying to work with me to sell you guys like fake football shirts and all that nonsense which i'm just not about whatsoever I'm about the quality for you guys, and I believe the one for map is that. So if you guys want to try out for yourselves, you'll find a link below in the description. And without wasting any more time, you guys, before I talk about just that wondrous, beautiful second half, I gotta talk about that first half, and I have to talk about why I don't want to see a 4-2-3-1 again unless we sign a, a Joshua Kimmich or a Thiago to play in the pivot, because I'm sorry. I'm sorry I've been saying this since last season and I thought that I explained the limitations of this midfield partnership but Jorginho and Kovacic is not a title winning, trophy winning midfield partnership to have. I mean for God's sake the fact that they struggled against Krasnodar today and no disrespect to them but I'm seeing certain players like Marcus Berg who 
You know what I mean? You know, certain players of that caliber too, who, uh, you know, they, they're not playing the best league. I'm just going to say it straight. And the fact that these guys offered us absolutely nothing playing together. And I do stress playing together because, let me just get Kova out of the way first. This guy's fine. This guy's good. I think in a midfield three, he could have even greater importance. Essentially being that support figure glue in the midfield. Kovacic in tight, dangerous areas in the field. If there's any player in the Premier League that's going to maintain that ball, keep it and create that space, that's going to be cover. And I do think playing in a midfield three that could, you know, have combinations of, you know, Kante, Mason Mount, Kai, Ziesha, etc, etc. I feel like cover could do his thing and be really good for us. But seeing these two play together, nah, nah, no more, you guys. I'm sorry, no more. It's not good enough. That's the honest reality. When I see this team play, this game really highlights me even more. The visible disconnect I could see between our attacking players and the players at the back, the defence and the midfield. I mean, this formation, this system constantly emphasises the attacking players making runs in behind, exploiting space, speed, pace, quickness. But to do that, you need to have quality distribution coming from deep. You need to have defenders or most importantly midfield players they have the capabilities to play accurate quality balls of that nature to find those on running players and you guys there was this one moment in particular in the first half which i mean wow i don't know what happens oh i mean i was fuming i went absolutely crazy i went absolutely stupid to be honest i started doing nonsense like swinging in the air just like losing my mind because i'll give you guys a quick thing about me yeah I hate repetition. I hate talking about the same thing. I hate when things are just the same and nothing evolves from it, nothing different comes from that. That's insanity. That's frustrating. I can't do that. So when I constantly see Jorginho make the same goddamn mistake that he hasn't been able to improve upon or really rectify or really do anything for the team with, I'm sorry, you guys, I just flipped it. Let me describe the moment to you now, yeah? Hudson Adoy was about to break the lines, running between the defense. You know, he's calling for Jorginho to play the ball. And for that split second, Cal, Jorginho, you know, they're locking eyes together. They're seeing each other, you know, they know. And what happens from Jorginho? He plays the pass sideways. He played the pass sideways in a system and a formation which requires that type of passing ability to the forward line. He played a useless pass sideways, ruined that move. And it's no surprise why we look so dead so dead playing in a 4-2-3 run at this point in time because we don't have the midfield to play in it we don't have joshua kimmich if we had him it would work because these guys movements would be rewarded things would be found but it requires a lot of quality and i do think that to get to a level where we could obviously use this as an alternative realistically you have to sign someone better than Jorginho. and i know that if my dad's gonna watch this he's just gonna be shaking his head right now saying what are you even talking about me but I'm sorry, dads. I'm sorry. I know you love Jorginho. I know you do. I like him too. He's a great player. He's got good qualities. He's a leader. He's vocal. At least he's, you know, tactically very smart. But unfortunately, the technical capabilities just don't match up with the rest of his game. And he doesn't add or bring anything to the team enough consistently. I'm sorry. Bitterly disappointing. Bitterly frustrating. I mean, it was no surprise to me that he fumbled his penalty because it seemed like he was having the game right from the start where he was not going to be great today. And I guess the only positive thing just to get this first half out of the way was the fact that Hudson Adoy got on the score sheet and with that, the only piece of great quality throughout the entire game was that passing move that set up Hudson Adoy's shot on goal. That was very lucky, but to be honest, you know, this was difficult for our attacking players. You know, I know some people might say that you know, Hudson Odoi was in the periphery. I could say the same thing about Kai, Werner, etc., etc. And it's no surprise it's going to constantly be like that if we're using a 4 2 3 1 without the necessary players we need to make the system work. So, you know, you guys, I'm waiting for this second half to come. I'm waiting for things to happen, man. I'm waiting for things to happen, bro. Like, honestly. And just to fast forward to the decisive part of the second half. It was the triple substitution around the 69th, 70th minute. We saw N'Golo Kante, Christian Pulisic, and we saw Mason Mount. And when I saw it, you guys, it hit me. This is it. 
This is 4-3-3 with Kante sitting deep and Mason and Kyle alongside him. I'm going to see the movement. I'm going to see the ability. This is the formation I want to see used throughout the entire goddamn season. And is it any surprise that the times we have used a 4-3-3, we've banged in the goals. We look at the West Brom game and we came out from 3-0 down to score three goals in the second half. Of course, we could have won the game. And, you know, the game tonight, scoring three goals in those final 20 minutes. I mean, it was like watching a completely different team. The fluidity. The passing options became open just like that. There was passing options absolutely everywhere. We saw those incredible late arrivals inside the books. And that the difference between seeing the 4-3-3 was that players were arriving late into the space. Instead of just running into the space, acting very static, doing absolutely nothing like they do in the 4-2-3-1. I'm sorry, we, we got to see this. We have to see this. But at the same time, I do sympathise with Frank Lampard because... The main reason why we haven't seen this offensive formation that I feel Lampard will have us playing consistently has been due to the terrible individual mistakes, which means that the manager can't fully trust the team where if we're playing a system like this, any man can make some dumb error that's going to lead to a direct goal. It can't work like that, you know, it's got to be a bit of both. The manager has to trust the team and the players to, you know, do their defensive responsibilities at the same time of obviously, you know, complimenting themselves in attack as well. So this is why I've been very hesitant to really have any major criticisms towards Frank Lampard because I personally feel like 4-3-3 was always the go-to plan and formation. We've always been a 4-3-3 team. And I think that if we maintain that style, if the team can quickly get their, obviously, you know, ideas and heads around that, it's going to be very exciting for us for this season, you guys. Honestly, because the football I was seeing in that second half shouldn't have been allowed due to the terrible, just fragmented first half we had where there was, wasn't was much great quality. Wasn't much great quality whatsoever. But to be honest, the only outlier for consistent quality throughout the entire game today was Hakim Ziyech, the player that, wow. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you guys straight, I love Ziyech. I love Ziyech. You guys who watched my channel for years, I did a video a time ago talking about seven players to replace Eden Hazard and I heavily vouched and wanted Ziyech to be signed because I knew what this guy can bring, what this guy can do. Let's see how this guy plays, man. You see him getting visibly frustrated when players aren't doing what he wants because he's a great player, probably one of our best, if not our best player. And of course, he has a certain standards he needs to play the game a certain way to get the very best out of it, you know? This is what happens when you're a big team. This is how you improve. This is how the game works, you know? You can't have great players playing alongside some average ones because it doesn't work like that. But as we saw in the second half, after that triple sub came on you guys, that's when the magic really started to happen. That's when the Chelsea 2.0 really started to kick in. It was amazing to see and honestly, for our game coming up this weekend, please, Lampard, please. <laughs> Why am I begging, bro? Like, some... <laughs> it's so funny because I felt the emotion coming out of my voice then, yeah? But <laughs> Lampard, just play 4-3-3 this weekend or win the game easiest. It's that simple. I mean, look how much better Kyle looks in those final 20 minutes compared to the overall 70 minutes today. I mean, everyone looks better because this is what complements those players. So, the one thing I want to get out from this match review, no more 4 2 3 one if we're going to be using Jorginho or Cover. We ain't that team, we ain't that club. If we want to use that formation, we got to go to the market and sign a Declan Rice or any other type of player of that nature. But you guys, honestly, I'm very happy with what I saw in the end. I'm happy for the future. I'm hoping that Lampard's substitutions today is a sign of things to come in our immediate future because... You know, certain players are getting back to full form. We have close to a full strength team right now, where everyone is close to 100% uh, fitness rates and levels. So things are very close, looking beautiful. Let's reserve our judgment just yet, because as I've been stressing urgently, we haven't even seen the things Lampard wants to do with this team. But this tonight was a glimpse of the beautiful things to come. But you guys, on that note, I'm going to wrap things up, keep things moving. Thank you for watching. I'm in the FC. This is Blue Lions TV. I'll catch you guys later with some more videos.